Hello, so my name is Professor Carl Philpott. I'm Professor of Rhinology and Olfactology at the University of East Anglia and I run the Norfolk Smell and Taste Clinic. So what is congenital anosmia? Congenital anosmia describes um, the situation when someone is born without the sense of smell. In most cases this will usually mean that the olfactory bulbs, which are like the relay stations that sit above the top of the nose where the smell nerves connect to the rest of the brain, are missing. Now the only way to determine this is to uh, undergo an MRI scan to prove this fact. Some people may have acquired anosmia. Now acquired anosmia occurs due to something happening after birth. That could be a virus, it could be a head injury, uh, it could be developing sinus disease uh, and there are various other causes. Now obviously if these events are um, something that occurs early in life, particularly in early childhood, it may be difficult for someone to distinguish between whether they're congenital or acquired. But generally the concept of congenital anosmia is that uh, it occurs from birth uh, and those people are never able to smell at all from the outset. And so what is parosmia and phantosmia? Well parosmia and phantosmia are what are known as qualitative disturbances of the sense of smell. So parosmia is a term used to describe a distortion of smell in response to a smell that's present. So perhaps the smell of garlic smell, smells like uh, rotten fish. Uh, so you get the wrong signal in the presence of an odour being there. Uh, in contrast, phantosmia describes a situation where um, a smell may be perceived, but there is no odour source. So there is no odour in the room, but someone smells smoke. Uh, so these sometimes uh, can be blurred, some people can experience both. Now there is another situation that's often called hyperosmia, but may also be referred to as olfactory sensitivity, and uh, technically there are sort of subtle differences. So hyperosmia is a situation where someone actually has a heightened sense of smell. Some people, however, may have a sensitivity to odours that they perceive as heightened that don't necessarily have an abnormally high sense of smell. There are also situations, and we see this more commonly in clinical practice, where um, someone um, perceives olfactory sensitivity, so they're sensitive to certain odours, and actually what they have is parosmia, so a smell distortion which they find uh, a revulsion. And when we do smell testing, we discover that they're hyposmic. So they actually have a smell disorder that has a reduced sense of smell, but with a distortion present. So some key differences there. Uh, these are often differences which can be better elucidated, uh, elucidated uh, by visiting a smell and taste clinic, undergoing smell testing and uh, speaking to the clinician to understand the differences.